Hi, this is just a short screencast to let us see how you can avoid having access errors when you try to access array elements which aren't actually there. Let's see an example. A, B, C, D. Of course you can print this array and we're in a playground here. So we can run it and it prints out A, B, C, D. Perfect. And you can print different elements of the array. So 0 will be the first and in this case number 3 will be the last. But what if you didn't know that? For whatever reason you're running in a function and your function tries to access the fourth element of the array. Swift's compiler doesn't know that ahead of time, so you get a runtime error, which isn't ideal to get code that doesn't work. So you want to think of how we can prevent that happening. Well, one way is to think ahead of time and think, what do you want to achieve? If you just want the last element of an array, Swift has the last, and it prints out D as an optional. If you're certain there's more than one element, you can force unwrap it. That, of course, is risky because it may crash if there are no elements in your array. And it's a similar story with first. And you'd expect this to print out the first element of array, the array. And it comes out optional. And if you're sure it's there, you can force unwrap it. So what we can do is write a function to get the fourth element of our array. So here we go write a guard statement and a guard statement makes sure that some statement is true. So we could ensure that we have at least four elements before running our code in question, which is going to be this return statement, which will return the fourth element in our array, which of course because it's zero indexed is number three. We get a fourth element of our array. Okay, and that works without crashing. Now in any case, you might want to try to check if the element you're getting is within the array range. And one way of setting up a range is using an array slice. So that'll be between the second and whoops, second and fourth element of the array, which is BCD. And what we can do is keep within those bounds. Because if you try to do slice of array zero, it takes the indexing from the original array and will cause us a runtime error again. So if we want to, say, get the first element of the array, we can set up an if statement. And we can use start index as well as the end index to make sure we're between them before we say print our target. So in this case, we'd expect it not to print anything. And if we want to print the first element, well, we can. Another way of approaching this is to use indices contains. So that ensures that we have an element at location 3 before we try to print. And if it does exist it prints it. If it doesn't exist 
then we won't print at all. Now our slice of array should be able to do the same. And it's kind of a nice solution, except the fact you'd have to repeat doing this every time you want to use the array, which might not be ideal. So to overcome this, we can use the extension. The extensions would apply for each use of our array. So we can have a get element function as part of that extension. And let's go return either our element or nil. Nil if it doesn't exist. And our element if it does exist. try to get element at number one hopefully this will work and it returns B but there's an issue if we want to use our slice of array that's an array slice so get element doesn't actually exist there so what we can do is leverage that our array slice is a, a, a collection type and while we're at it what we'll do is we'll override subscript once again we'll go return an element if it exists or nil if it doesn't okay, using the teenery operator to return the element or nil and now we can do slice of array that index 0 should return nothing which is good on the right hand side there is 0 and if we return 1 we should return the first element which is B in this case 3 will return D and 4 should once again return nil.